Today I'm going to be sharing with you my favourite books of 2015. I'm going to start with the book that most surprised me which was Jonathan Strange and Mr Noel by Susanna Clarke. It is a piece of magical realism so it's basically historical fiction with a bit of magic added in. Jonathan Strange and Mr Noel is the story of two magicians who want to bring magic back to England. It is funny and witty and Susanna Clarke creates this really complex world of magic that you just can't fault throughout the entire novel. This novel just has so many layers. It's a story about magic, but it's also an exploration of oppression and of voices that are silenced. One of the things I love most about this text is actually the footnotes. Some of the footnotes are pages and pages long, and they really just add to this really carefully created world. Some of the footnotes reference real historical characters and give an insight into the political context of the text. But others are purely fictional, they are fairy tales and myths, and they actually sometimes reference fictional books. My personal favourite is The Life of Jonathan Strange by John Segundus, published by John Murray, London, 1820. Jonathan Strange, Mr Noor is huge, but it is so worth it, I cannot explain to you. I think that everybody should read this book. I genuinely think it's a masterpiece. Moving on to two less surprising books, To the Lighthouse and the Waves by Virginia Woolf. I always find it very hard to describe what Virginia Woolf's novels are actually about, which is slightly worrying as I am doing my dissertation on her. The reason I find it difficult is because you can never really pinpoint Virginia Woolf's novels into one definite meaning. I think this is because Virginia Woolf focuses on the interior lives of her characters rather than the big events and it actually corresponds with Virginia Woolf's own feelings towards life writing and biography. How biographers focus on the big events in people's lives but actually never looks at the person. If you took the plot of To the Lighthouse, it would be about a family and some guests holidaying on the Isle of Skye. And the main event is the Ramsay's son James desperately wanting to go to the lighthouse. It's an exploration of the relationships between the families, a need for validation, how we create our identities. The waves really ask the same questions of to the lighthouse. Who am I? What is the meaning of life? The waves follows a group of children from their childhood throughout their lives and the story is told in monologues. There is a great sense of loss in the waves and there is in to the lighthouse too but I think in the waves it is the most poignant. As in the text, the character of Percival seems to be really present, yet he is actually never there and never speaks. I've had some really lovely comments from people saying about how, after seeing a couple of my videos on Virginia Woolf, that they've now started to read some of her writing, and that makes me so happy because these books are just incredible and I really want to share Virginia Woolf with everybody. I also want to really quickly mention Virginia Woolf's essays because Virginia Woolf is just a fantastic essay writer. I think if you haven't read any of her fiction, her essays are a great way to start reading Virginia Woolf and indeed if you don't like Virginia Woolf's fiction, please go back and reread them and you might like them later, I promise. But if you really don't, her essays are still really great. T.S. Eliot's collected poems, especially The Wasteland and Burnt Norton. I studied The Wasteland at university and I was slightly daunted by it because it's so well known and it's seen as such an important and significant poem in modernism and in 20th century literature in general. It is full of lots of different voices. I remember at university we talked about, I don't know whether it was a critic who actually said this, but we were talking about it in seminar about how like on an old radio where you would like tune in to find the radio station and you'd go for all of these different voices and you'd get tiny little snippets of different people talking and i know that's kind of simplifying the wasteland but it really does feel like that because you begin the poem with one thing thinking it's about a certain topic and then you find out that the voice is actually someone different and it's constantly changing and shifting it's just a complete work of genius it is incredibly poignant and emotive and at points even darkly comic. Burnt Norton is from Four Quartets which I think is my favourite collection of T.S. Eliot's writing and I'm just going to read you the beginning section because it's just amazing. Time present and time past are both perhaps present in time future and time future contained in time past. If all time is eternally present, all time is unredeemable. 
What might have been is an abstraction remaining a perpetual possibility only in a world of speculation. What might have been and what has been point to one end which is always present. Footfalls echo in the memory down the passage we did not take towards the door we never opened into the Rose Garden. Bryce had revisited by Evelyn Wall. I've been looking forward to this book for years and I was hoping it was amazing and it certainly didn't disappoint. It is now one of my favourite books. The text is about Charles Ryder and it's in first person and actually the subtitle of the novel is The Sacred and Profane Memories of Captain Charles Ryder. I think that title pretty much sums it up really because it is all about memory. I mean Brideshead, the house, becomes this memorial for the supposedly golden age of the aristocracy. You can read Brideshead Visited as a story of decline for the aristocracy and the end of the country house. I mean, when Charles is in Oxford, it is indulgent and vain. And throughout the text, as Charles moves on in his life, he becomes more detached. And actually, that indulgence becomes a sign of loss of an emptiness and trying to fill a void. The joy that is Emma by Jane Austen. I'm pretty sure Emma Woodhouse is the most privileged of Jane Austen's heroines and it's really enjoyable to see her go through all of these misunderstandings due to her matchmaking. Emma isn't actually that sure, I think it's like, it's over 400 pages, I think it might be nearer 500 but it is definitely worth it and you just go through it so quickly and it's just such a joy and a pleasure to read. I love Jane Austen, so witty, so much social commentary. I'm actually going to a lecture that is um, run by the Jane Austen Society on Emma, uh, which I'm really looking forward to because I didn't study this book, I just read it and I didn't annotate it, which is quite rare for me. And I'd really like to go back to this book with a more analytical, kind of academic-y way of looking at it because with so many Jane Austen novels, they're really great fun and they're just wonderful. They always have just so many layers to them. Whenever I read any Jane Austen novel, I always go back to John Mullen, who's an academic who specialises in Jane Austen, and he is fantastic, and he's done lots of talks, including ones at the Hay Festival, which you can watch on YouTube. And in one of the talks, or in one of the IQ squared debates that he's done, he quotes another critic that says, the thing about Jane Austen is that it's very, very simple, but it's also very, very complicated. And that's how I feel, there's just so much there. Basically, Jane Austen is amazing, and so is Emma. So if you would like to read Jane Austen, read Emma, because it's a really great one to start with, I think. Another surprising read, The Driver's Seat by Muriel Spark. It is about a journey of self-destruction, and I don't want to say anything more than that. It is only a novella, so it's absolutely tiny, and it haunted me for days after. It opened up so many questions and challenged my thinking and it's a play on the crime genre. It is shocking and powerful and it's probably one of the best novellas I've ever read. Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. So enjoyable and such an immersive read and it really did make 2015 for me. Claire Randall is on a second honeymoon with her husband Frank soon after the end of the Second World War when she suddenly time travels to the 18th century. Because of the TV series there is so much excitement around this book and I don't really get to kind of join in with any of that because I'm not really involved in any fandoms but with Outlander because so many people are reading it now and talking about it I can get involved finally. I think I'll leave my recommendations there. I hope you enjoyed this video and have found some new books to read. Hopefully Jonathan Strange or Virginia Woolf. Definitely my favourites of this list. In the comments please let me know what books you enjoyed reading in 2015 and if you have any reading plans for 2016.